Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. Today I'm going to show you how to install an Android device using VirtualBox. So if you want to use an Android operating system like you would have on your Android phone, you can do that through VirtualBox. I'm going to show you how. So first what you need is VirtualBox. If you don't have VirtualBox, I refer to some of my other videos. Or you can just go to VirtualBox. It's open source. Go to Oracle VirtualBox, download it, uh, and download whatever file works best for your operating system. So once you have VirtualBox installed, you should have this interface here. What we're going to do is we're going to install Android x86. So we're going to go type in Google Android x86. Just do a Google search. This first link is what you want. And it's, the website's going to look like this. We're going to click the download key. And it's going to take us to, uh, and we can download here from SourceForge or from FOSSA. I, recommend SourceForge and you can find the different releases here uh, you can download the latest version just be careful don't click on any of the ads but you can download the latest version here when you download that version what you're gonna get is an ISO file now I definitely recommend you label that ISO file and you store it in the same folder you store all your other lab files I have a lab file here cybersecurity lab and I have Android this is what the ISO the disk image file is gonna look like so you want to put it in this folder I named this folder Android and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to VirtualBox and we're going to create a new machine okay so we're going to go to machine new or we can use the options at the top if you don't have any machines you'll probably see those new we're going to name this uh, Android x86 name it whatever you want make sure you store the virtual machine in the file folder that you want and we're going to say type for Linux and then we're going to select the type as other Linux 64 bit. So it's going to show this little gold icon. I don't know what that is. All right, now we're going to go ahead next. Now there's a couple things we need to keep in mind. Okay, so we need to make the memory at least two gigabytes. Okay, I'm just going to bump it up to four. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to create a virtual disk. Okay, we can we're going to change these settings or create that virtual disk VDI virtual box disk image dynamically allocated it's fine and what we're gonna do is we're change that to at least 20 gigabytes okay so we're gonna change that to at least 20 gigabytes you can pick whatever size you want just make sure it's over 20 because you'll need that to install the Android operating system the operating system itself is going to take up uh, enough space that you need at least 20 so you know it's about can't remember but it's a little under 20 if you don't have 20 you're gonna have problems if you have like under 15 you probably won't be able to install it at all all right so once we've created that we're gonna right click on our new machine that we created go to settings and we're gonna change a few other options here so we're gonna do first off we're gonna change um, the storage okay and the system let's do system first we have the memory at four gigabytes we do need to change this to the processor for at least two processors. I'm going to go ahead and pick four. And then we don't need to do anything with the accelerations. We need at least four processors. The video memory for the display needs to be changed to at least 128 megabytes. I'm going to put that all the way up. And we're going to keep that at 128 megabytes. And we're going to put the graphics controller as VBOX VGA. Now you'll get a little air here. Don't worry about that. It's saying that would be an error for uh, typical Linux distribution. Not, it's not taking into account that we're going to install Android here because we haven't given it an ISO file. The other thing we need to do, uh, we go to storage here, and we're going to have uh, empty, okay? And then we're going to select here, uh, choose disk file. Okay, so we want to select our, we have our optical drive. You can leave that as default. I just want to make sure that was the same because I have multiple Androids. You click here, choose a disk file. Now this is where you navigate to that folder. That's why it's important to be organized where you have Android, the ISO file. So we're going to hit add and open. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to network and we're going to select our adapter. Now. If you want to use your existing laptop's adapter or desktop's adapter, you're just going to hit bridged, and that's going to share the internet connection you have on your current device. If you have an external 
you know, Wi-Fi adapter, you can use that too, and you'll be able to select that from the list there. But you want to select that adapter. So we're going to select bridged adapter for now, just to keep it simple. That's, uh, I imagine how most of you will be doing it. Hit OK. OK, and now once we've done that, we can go ahead and we can start this. So we right click, start, normal start. It's going to pop up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to install Android on the device. So once you get to this screen, what you want to do is mouse down to advanced options. And you want to go auto install to a specified hard disk. When you see the text, you know that's working correctly. You know, arrow over to yes, hit yes. It's going to format the partition for you automatically. And then what it's going to do, we're going to go ahead and run Android x86. It's going to install there. And you should see if everything works correctly. You'll see this Android logo come up. And then you'll be able to go through the rest of the Android installation process. So this is, can be very useful to install the Android operating system if you, if you want to access mobile apps uh, that you don't want to have a phone for, or you want to have two instances of an app, for example. So we go ahead and hit start. I would recommend skipping the Wi-Fi connection from here. It's easier and it works a little better if you do it from the home page. And just remember your mouse kind of acts like as your finger whenever you do this. You can set this up if you like, hit next. Uh, you can disagree to your location sharing if you want. And then you can sign into a Google account. You can select a, a PIN or a password. And we can select the PIN here. So select whatever, whatever pin you want. That's not a very good pin. So I don't recommend using that one, but just for the demo purposes. Now this is gonna bring you to the home page. You're gonna have your buttons here, just like you would on your smartphone. Uh, you can set that to what you want. And this is your interface. You got your apps here. You can swipe just like you would. You can pull this down like you would. So just like you would with your finger. And then from here, you can set your Wi-Fi up. You can download apps from the App Store. You can sign into a Google account. You can do everything you would on a normal Android device. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this is helpful for you if you're looking to you know, install a mobile operating system for testing purposes or just to have one on your computer for convenience. So hope this is helpful for you. I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you so much. If you're looking on how to add other virtual machines like the other virtual machines I have here, check out my other videos. Uh, check out my course on how to build a cybersecurity lab. And thanks again for watching. Have a great day.